Hi, everyone. Welcome to They Had Fun. I'm Rachel, and I am back with another amazing story about New York City. And I also happen to be back in New York City. And as you can imagine, I am truly ecstatic. I had a absolutely lovely time on my European getaway. But as we have said multiple times on this show, it is always good to come home. And actually, when it's not good to come home, that's when you know you probably need to heave ho out of New York City. But that is not happening for me. I landed. I was on cloud nine. I am truly like just as you can imagine, just so frenetic with this idea of being back and going out and getting drinks and sitting at a bar and people watching and walking through Central Park and going to some neighborhood I haven't been to in a very long time. <sighs> I know you guys probably (laughs) find me so annoying, but imagine being married to me. This is me all of the time. I'm like already sitting here talking to my husband about tonight. I'm like, oh my God, after I record the intro and I catch up on all these emails, like, do you want to go get a drink somewhere? Should we go sit down at like Keen's and get a martini? I just feel so fucking excited to be back in this city. I love it so much. I can't wait to get into a bunch of new things. So this leads me in perfectly. We're not going to do our typical Rachel's Rex this week. And frankly, why should I? I I have not had my finger on the pulse for weeks. Of course, I still know a lot of great stuff to do, but you guys would know better. I have been gone. As we know with this city, if you leave, it doesn't give a shit about you. Everything keeps going. So I have somewhat no idea what the cool stuff is that is going on right now. So I would love to hear from you. So the difference we're going to do this week is this Friday, instead of in our Instagram stories, I'm not going to give you recommendations and be the know-it-all that you usually love. I'm going to ask you for them. Truly would genuinely love to hear from you. Tell me what you've been getting into. Tell me the shows you've seen that have been good. Tell me what you've been doing in the sweltering heat with the smoke and the humidity that is just so nuts. Tell me what cool bars you've been to that you sat down and met great people. Tell me the restaurants that have been awesome. I don't know. I would just love, love, love to hear from you. Seriously, if you hear this and you're like, no, I'm not going to say anything. Say something. This is it. Say yes. What should I go check out this next week that I am back in New York City? I want to hear from you. I want to do some cool things. All right. That's it. It's short. It's sweet. That's our intro for this week. Next week, I'll be back with two more regular Rachel's Rex for you after I have been out in the streets doing things and getting my finger on the pulse once again. So don't forget to check us out on Instagram on Friday. If you're not following us on Instagram every time I say this, why are you not? So many good photos, so much good content. I'm giving you Rachel's Rex on there in reels with me taking videos going out everywhere. So go check that out on Friday. Let's get into our episode for this week. I think you're going to love this one. My guest is so amazing. She is a comic right here in New York City. Thank God. She also promises to be a very normal girl. Let's see if we can hold her to that. Please welcome to the show, Rachel Coster. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel Coster. <laughs> you are Rachel Coster and you are here. Actually, this is the first time we're having two Rachels on the show. So, wow. Kind of chaotic. But really helpful because I am so bad with names. It helps if I already just know it because it's my own. I like will never forget a Rachel. Perfect. (laughs) Unforgettable. Well, I will never forget you because your presence, your energy, your smile, all of it. Incredible. You're so fucking hilarious. So let's talk a little bit about your stand up career in this fair city. Is it wonderful? Does it drain the life out of you? Feel free. Give us give us all the honesty. (laughs) I love it. I'm from Long Island. So I like kind of was here when I was younger. And then I went to boarding school where a lot of like the kids would come into Manhattan a lot or like lived here already. It's nice to come back. But before I was in Boston doing comedy and it's like so much better in New York because people are like actually um, (laughs) with all due respect. Oh, I don't want to be mean about Boston, but it's like such a small town. And so coming to New York where there's like a bunch of really diverse points of view and different styles of comics is like so awesome I love this city I mean you are on a super New York centric podcast so I think it's okay for us to like roast boss give a give a little sass to Boston yeah fine city great people but you know we love New York more than anything yeah and I did really love Boston had the time of my life it's just really cold and like you do run out of stuff to do like a weekend (laughs) um so I'm I love it here so much you're doing shows where can people usually see you where can we catch you because people really do need to come see you not that we're going to give out specific dates but like where can we often find beautiful Rachel doing a show I do a lot of stuff in Brooklyn I'm like rarely in Manhattan really I never go in there um no no offense all love (laughs) but usually I'm like Union Hall is like my favorite place to perform nice every now and then I get lucky enough to perform at the Bell House which is really really fun awesome oh also I have a an 8 a.m show 
one Sunday a month. Well, right now it's at Caffeine Underground at 9 a.m., but it's going to go back to being 8 a.m. in Herbert Von King Park as soon as it's warm enough to get back outside. And it is so fucking fun. 8 a.m.? Yeah, it's crazy. But people come and people have the time of their lives. And every time people are like, oh my God, this was actually the best thing ever. I like just got a DM. A guy was like, I didn't want to come. It sounded like a horrible idea. I had the best time and my day was amazing. (laughs) Like it really does get you going in an amazing way. Oh my God. See, I love that. That to me is so New York. Like just being like, has anyone ever tried to do a comedy show outdoors in the morning? And it's such like a New Yorker too, to just like come up with that and be like, why the hell not? Let's do a show like that. And that you can experience something like that. And I'm not a morning person whatsoever. So I have to imagine bringing yourself to that and then being like, Hey, it's nine o'clock. Look at me. I'm up. I'm doing stuff. Let's go get a bagel. Let's go do something. And it gets your day started. Like you're saying, I could see that being fun. It's heaven, especially in the summer when it's in the morning and you get to like be the first one up. Anyway, I'm like a an evangelist for my own show, but I'm a genius <laughs> for it. You have to be. You have to sell your own shit. I mean, that's how it works here. If you don't have the hustle, you will not last. So yeah. you're doing great. Okay, <laughs> perfect segue into like lasting. Let's talk a bit about when did you move to New York? So I moved here in 2018 the first time. Uh, just for six months with my like ex-boyfriend but then I moved here for good in 2019 in January finally got my feet under me and like a community all popping off before 2020 and then it was immediately squashed (laughs) but no problem we've recovered and we'll be okay but I got here in 2019 in January and I I had just gotten my uh, wisdom teeth taken out so I had like a huge infected jaw and was like puffy and sickly for the first three months that I was here. It was kind of a nightmare. Just walking around with a big ass jaw. Like I made it. I'm here in New York City. I made it. <laughs> I really, it really was just like a struggle nonstop. I was like, I earned my little stay here. It was not easy. <laughs> You're like a little baby. You've only been here since 2019. Like I love it. This might be the newest guest we've ever had, which I love because I would hope, or maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe there's some like, still wide-eyed optimism and just pure genuine fun in your eyes instead of cranky old people have been here for decades and are like the streets are too busy I think that's totally valid when I was like little I would come here all the time and so I like I've seen it from every point of view of like a kid who just goes to like Broadway shows a teenager who's like up to no good going to like bars underage and like boys houses and stuff (laughs) and doing drugs in like mansions or like penthouses in the Upper West Side, like trying to be a gossip girl girl. (laughs) And then also just like living a normal life where it's like not very luxurious or or crazy, but it is totally nice. And so I'm thankful for that. I've lived every like movie or like all the all the good movies. I've been lucky that it's all the good movies and none of the like very challenging and like scary stuff. I like that. That's such a great way of putting it. You've lived different movies. You've had different lives. It's only been what three four years or something so Mm. like you were saying you grew up in long island it sounds like you came here Mm -hmm. in 2019 the second question is always why did you move to new york maybe you were in boston first maybe some others like you live nearby but like what was the reason that brought you here instead of somewhere else it was close to my family it was familiar i knew a lot of people here and i like that you can do anything basically except for like uh get fresh air or like be totally at peace (laughs) um, or like drive around (laughs) and clear your head but I do like that you can do anything else (laughs) you can live like 30 lives in a day I really like do like 30 things every day see so many people and I'm so grateful for how like rich my life is in experiences I think a lot of people who don't live here don't really understand that of like how much shit we all actually get done in a day and we all need to stop being so hard on ourselves and we think we don't accomplish anything you see your to-do list and you're like wait a second I actually did a bunch of stuff I really have like started being like Rachel you're allowed to have like I like write it into my calendar now like I need like seven hours where I'm like, you're allowed to watch TV, you stupid, stupid bitch. (laughs) And then I get to. And then I come out a little bit nicer. I think that's good advice for any New Yorker. Take some time and come out a bit nicer when you arrive on the subway platform. And drink water. I really think that the reason New Yorkers are mean is because we're all really dehydrated because there's no toilets anywhere. And also like no public water fountains. They like got rid of them after COVID or something. (laughs) There's like nowhere to drink water and nowhere lets you piss. I think you might actually be right. It is something because, you know, whenever you have family in town and they're like, oh, my God, I have to go to the bathroom. What do I do? And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. there's nowhere for you to go. And they're like, what? What do you do? I'm like, you have to like strategize 
your day. Like you can Yeah, dude. When you get to a place, you chug. <laughs> and then when you know you're gonna leave a place, you stop drinking water for three hours ahead yes, of time. You're, Duh. <laughs> you're dropping the the uh I don't want to be crass. I don't know. Urination gems for all of us of how it is living in New York City. It's very true. I love it. I love that you love the city so much. I love that you're performing in the city. I think it's something people forget about. Like, obviously, we all know about the stand up. Everyone's going and seeing shows, but we forget mm-hmm. that there's still kids moving here to pursue their dreams and do these shows. And like everyone who says stuff like that isn't happening is wrong. You can go see Rachel Coster at 8 a.m. in the park and watch her stand up show. Okay. Now I have to ask you our most important question of the show. Rachel, what is the most fun you've ever had in New York City? It was the night that we were supposed to die. Do you remember in 2012? It was the end of the Mayan calendar. Oh, yeah. It was like December 12, 2012. Yes, 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 yes. It was supposed to be the end of the world. So we were like, LOL, it's the end of the world. This is going to be crazy. And I'm 16, so like everything is so exciting to me. And I go to my friend's house in the Upper West Side. It's like gorgeous. She's really rich. And her older brother is like this hot college student who I had such a crush on. And he was like, let's go out, guys. And she, like, me and my friend like went out and got like Thai food on St. Mark's. And I thought that the night was over. I was like, well, it's cool. I love New York City. We got Thai food. Yeah. That's enough for me. <laughs> and then she's like, okay, cool. Let's go like meet up with my friends. And so we went. I mean, now I have no idea where any of this took place because I like didn't understand the city at all. Those are always the best. It was somewhere by the water by the Pepsi Cola sign you know what i'm talking about yeah long island city okay cool we are somewhere over there <laughs> or we, we were across from that and so we were like smoking weed with her like french friend and then he was like let's go where's the boom boom room oh at the standard the standard wait you started down at saint mark's then you went all the way to long island city and then you came back to meatpacking we weren't in Long Island City. We were across from Long Island City, like oh, on the okay. water. Like Sutton Place, probably, or something. Exactly. Okay. Still weird, sort of like pinballing around. Awesome. Yes. And then we went to this like hot guy was having like a party with a bunch of like hot model girls. I was like gorgeous, but thought I was like an ugly toad in comparison. Aww. And they were like, we're having a jacuzzi party. Like everyone get naked. We're going to like go in the jacuzzi. And I like, got into like my thong and I was like okay "Okay," and like (laughs) hopped in the jacuzzi I like was severely underage and I never like did anything but like it was insane that I was in these (laughs) places we're hanging out in the jacuzzi and then like someone started fighting (gasps) with someone else's boyfriend and so it was very clear we had to get out of the jacuzzi and get our stuff and get going (laughs) the people that I was with the like hot older boy and my friend were like all right, we're out of here. There's a fight starting. And like, they like took it into the hallway. We were like, we're out of here. So we left and we like went out through the like service exit and we were like smoking weed in the standard service exit. <laughs> and then they were like, let's keep this thing going. Yes. And so we went to this girl. I'm not going to say her name because I don't want any, I don't know. Perfect. Fine. She's now famous on her own, but she was the daughter of someone who was in a Stanley Kubrick movie, um, a big one. Okay. And <laughs> She had like this gorgeous apartment. I don't know where that one was either. (laughs) There was this huge tapestry. She lived there alone. She like, she was like, do you want a beer? And I was like, oh, I'm okay. I'm allergic to gluten. And I was also like a scaredy cat. She was like, oh, that's fine. And she just opened a bottle of Vuv Clicquot or or whatever it's called. (gasps) That like expensive champagne. She was like, I just, I want you to be able to like have fun. And I was like, thanks girl. And she like had a bowl full of like cigarettes oh and um a bowl full of lighters cigarettes and like coke I was like take whatever you want and I just like took a lighter because I was like she's being so generous but I didn't want to how, wait how did you wind up at her house like who knew someone just knew her the like older boy used to like hook up with her or something or they okay. were like best friends or they did drugs together okay and so we were like out on the like fire escape smoking then they were like we're gonna we're gonna buy coke and I was I had never done that obviously I was 16 I was like okay cool no problem stay cool we went downstairs and I like hopped in the car with the the guy was like come in the car with me just so like he doesn't kill me and I was like cool cool I love being collateral (laughs) it's like confusing not using anyone's names or anything it sounds like I'm like being totally drained oh it's great we like get in the car I'm like (laughs) like trying to be chill we buy drugs and they're like okay cool we're gonna go back to your friend's house so we go they like all did coke in front of me I was like I'm not doing that I'm like a child and if I die on the day that the Mayans 
predicted we would all die. <laughs> it would be like so humiliating. And my mom would be so upset with me. And so I waited a little bit and then they were like, come on, it's like fun and it's no problem and you'll have like a good time. And so I did some and then I like, I was like a new person, like I like was so shy and nervous before that. And then I like stood in the boys doorway with like my arm up and I was like being so sexy and I was like, what are you, what are you listening to? Like I like went into his room and I was like, what are you listening to? And I like suddenly was like the queen of the universe and he was like, okay, it's hitting. <laughs> he like shouted out, he was like, Cox is being weird. Aww. I like went in and we like listened to music all night. Oh my gosh. And I like had such a big crush. No one had ever paid attention to me before. Like a boy had never paid attention to me before. And so it was like the first time I was like being seen by a guy and it was like, we didn't do anything. He was 22, I was 16 and he had a girlfriend and also it would have just been so illegal and bad yes but it was like so flirty and fun and the first time that I was like oh I'm like beautiful and cool the first time I felt like oh my god love is possible and I will find it you know like (laughs) it was electrifying because until then it had just been like every now and then a boy would want to hook up with me but it was kind of like obligatory and so this was the first time I was like oh I'm like sexy and cool and things are gonna work out for me (laughs) (laughs) the wonders of cocaine (laughs) and then we like walked through the park in the morning at like 5 a.m and smoked more weed and then I went home and I like threw my underwear out in Penn Station starting a tradition of throwing my underwear out in Penn Station for whatever reason every time I'm there I'll just take off whatever I'm wearing and leave it in the garbage (laughs) in the bathroom I don't know why but it really feels important to me that I keep doing it and like I think I'll be like 70 leaving my underwear in in the bathroom at Penn Station um I love that (laughs) it's so gross and weird but whatever no it's great and I like went home and I like, slept for two days it's not such an interesting story now as someone who like that stuff is all pretty commonplace and boring but when I was 16 it like opened my eyes to a world that could exist and I literally like had a newfound confidence and swagger that everyone noticed they were like you're like figuring yourself out it like totally solidified my identity as a person who deserves to like experience cool stuff and I was obviously watching Gossip Girl all the time so I was like I'm basically like fucking Chuck Bass. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I just want to say nothing about that sounds typical or boring or or any of these words that you're saying. It sounds incredible. It sounds so fun. It sounds so wild. And the thought of being like 16 and doing all of this, we've all had a few nights similar to this. I haven't thrown away my underwear before. I don't know. But like, you know, I was maybe doing those when I was like early 20s, mid 20s, like to be 16 and having this experience like that's lucky. I can just honestly see and feel inside of that woman's apartment where you're just like, she's so fancy. And then her opening that bottle of champagne for you and you being like, oh, my God, I can see it. I like didn't even drink it. I literally was like, I didn't have even a sip. And my friend was like, it's fine. She's so rich. But I was like, I felt really bad. It's all of these things. It's partying at Boom Boom Room. It's trying drugs. It's meeting a cute boy. It's finding yourself. I mean, we have, maybe you should turn this into like a rom-com movie or so. This is your fourth movie you're living inside of your own life. And it's so not me. I really am like not really into drugs. I don't really like drinking And I definitely like getting a a full night's sleep. But it's important (laughs) that I have nights like that every now and then where I feel like fun. Yeah, that's important for everyone to have nights like that every once in a while. That's why this show is here to remind people to go do stuff like that. The story is a perfect reminder of doing things like that. I love it. It's perfect. It's so New York. I love that you have no idea where you wound up or how you got to these places. I know when we went, we went to a diner at some point. And a boy kissed me on the cheek, a really hot boy. How could you leave it? The diner and the kiss on the cheek. That is the highlight to go out on of every New York story is the diner. And you got a little, you had a little flirtation earlier and then you found a little tiny bit of love and a little Mm -hmm. kiss at the end of the night. It's perfect. I have to ask you my last and final question of the show. And that is, what is your favorite thing about New York? There's so much love. (laughs) I know that sounds crazy and usually it's like totally chaotic. Like everything people say is so true. Like people are so nasty here and moving so fast and there's a lot of animosity all the time, but people really love each other and really look out for each other. And anytime there's something bad that happens, there's 10 good things that happen. And anytime anyone is like 
in danger people look out i was on a, the train the other day and like this girl was like i could see that she was about to pass out because i've been there and she was like wearing a coat she was like can i just have some water because she saw that i was drinking some and i was like yeah and then three people on the train were like take off your coat you're gonna be fine someone like gave her some food like we all just kind of like saw what was happening and we're like it's no problem this doesn't need to happen we've got your back And, like, when good things happen that, like, everyone can rally behind, it feels so fucking good. No one said that that's their favorite thing is just how much love is here. And I think we forget about it sometimes. And that (laughs) being on the train and that that story is really a perfect example. We really are there for each other a lot. And I think there is a tremendous amount of love here, even if we forget about it sometimes, even if we don't feel it for a really long time, it is here. And I think. It's a beautiful answer. So thank you for making that your favorite thing about New York. It's very good. I also like the food (laughs) and how late it stays open. I love your story. I hope everyone hears it and decides, you know what? I need to have one night like that every once in a while and goes out (laughs) and flirts with some boys and tries a few substances and wind up in a rich person house. It's wonderful. Thank you so much for being on the show. I had so much fun talking to you. Rachel, thank you so much for having me. Most of all, thanks, New York. They had fun. And I like this podcast. (laughs) 